What's up booktube? Welcome back. My name is Laura if you're new here and today we're talking about 10 series to help you reach your Goodreads goal just in time for the new year. So the new year is swiftly approaching. I really can't believe that it's almost the next year. Like it's wild. I'm still processing it last year and now this year is almost done and like I'm just, I don't wanna think about it, honestly. I'm stressed. But the new year coming means that everybody is scrambling to reach all their Goodreads goals uh, or just their like general reading goals if you don't use Goodreads. Not everybody makes goals and that's totally fine, but I personally do. This year I set my goal at 52 books, which is just one book a week, thinking that it would be a challenge Challenge, but like pretty achievable. I think I hit that goal in like July. So um, I've read a lot more than I thought I was going to have time for this year and I'm very proud of myself. So I have personally already hit my goal, but I'm sure there are many of you who have not reached your goals yet. So I thought I would go over some really quick series to help you get there. And there are three types of series that I especially love. And those are novella series because they're very, very short. So you can easily get through a whole bunch of them in a weekend. I love duologies. And then those kinds of books that are just like cotton candy, like they're just so addictive and easy to read. So those are the the main types of series that I have to talk about today so let's just get right into it starting with the one that nobody is going to be surprised that I'm talking about and that is the Wayward Children series by Shonda McGuire you knew this was coming I mean I will talk about this series whenever I have the chance to like literally every time that I could possibly talk about it I will mention it I adore the series it is my favorite series in the entire world and they're all super short they're all under 200 pages I think there are currently six books out and you can read all six in a weekend. Like I managed to get through, I think four of them in one day once. These are very short, very fast paced, mostly character driven, but there's some great plot in there as well. And the worlds are just so fascinating. This series mostly takes place at Elmer West School for Whipper Children, uh, which runs as a school for like delinquent kids, but it's actually a place for kids to go after they have found a door to a different parallel universe. They've made a home there and they've really found their place and found themselves. But then for some reason they were forced to come back to our world and now they're just miserable and they have no idea how to live in this world anymore. And so Eleanor West, who is one of these children who has now obviously grown up, she made a school for these kids to come back and try to either figure out how to live in this world again or wait for their doors to reopen for them again. So that's the gist of the series. It's portal fantasy, which if you know me, it's my favorite genre. I love portal fantasy so much. I am one of these children, basically. Uh, I spent my entire childhood like looking under rocks and like behind trees trying to find some door to a, di to a different universe. So reading series like this just makes me so happy and again they're so so short that like you can easily read six books in a weekend and be able to hit that goodreads goal another novella series that i love is the murderbot diary series by martha wells this one i just adore i've talked about this series to death on my channel i talk about it all the time this one is a sci-fi but it's more of a comedy than like a hard sci-fi it follows an ai security robot who has hacked its own system in order to go rogue but it does not want to go rogue in order to go like kill people it literally just wants to go sit in a corner and like watch soap operas and read books and have music playing and just be left the fuck alone for the rest of eternity. <laughs> That's basically all it wants to do, but it just keeps running into these humans who just constantly need its help and it just can't say no. This is just the most hilarious series. I definitely recommend the audiobooks for this one because the way that the story is written, it's written almost like a conversation, like it's somebody telling you about this ridiculous, crazy adventure that they had. So having the audiobooks, it just feels like you're just listening to your pal like bitch about work basically. And it's so funny. They're narrated by by Kevin R. Free, who's one of my favorite audiobook narrators. I think he does an amazing job with these ones. And just overall, I cannot get enough of them. They are truly fantastic, and I just want the world to read them. Next up is the Wicked Villain series by Katie Robert. I think technically these are a little bit too long to be considered novellas, not positive there, but either way they are super short and can easily be read within a couple of hours. They are so good, <laughs> definitely 18 plus. These are BDSM erotica retellings of Disney stories where the main character falls in love with the villain instead and they are just so much fun. Like not only are they short, but they're also so addictive. They're so well written and like the smell Mutt is written beautifully. Anytime that somebody wants a like spicier book, this is my first recommendation. And again, they are so fast to read. They could easily be read through in a weekend if you wanted to. That might be a lot of smut in one weekend, but you know what? I don't judge. Do you? Have fun. <laughs> And then I have a couple of duologies as well. The first one is Lit Verse by Nino Sipri. The first book being Finna. Again, I've talked about this series so many freaking times. These are both novellas as well, so they're very, very short. These are such a good time and they're so hard to explain what they are because it sounds really weird. 
but basically it takes place at a knockoff Ikea somewhere in America. And at this Ikea, sometimes wormholes open up that take you to parallel universes. So it's a portal sci-fi. And in the first book, it follows two main characters who have just recently broken up. They both work there. And one evening, this wormhole opens up and a customer's grandmother gets lost in there. And so they're basically forced to go into this wormhole despite the fact that it might kill them to go find this customer. And then book two happens on the same night, but it follows a different character who was friends with one of the people who went into the wormhole and it's just kind of his story. Um, I think I like book two better. They're both amazing but book two just had so much more whimsy and humor to it. Now the real thing for this series is that it has all this like really interesting sci-fi and portal stuff happening. There's like these weird creatures going on and like there's a lot happening but the main thing about it is the commentary on capitalism and like working in customer service and like consumerism. It's a really interesting thought-provoking series but they're so quick and they're so much fun and they're so weird and whimsical that they still read so fast and there's such a good time. I cannot recommend the series enough. I was raving about it all last year because of Finna and then I finally got to book two earlier this year and like it just it it made it even better like it's, it's such a good series. I believe the author wasn't planning on releasing book two and I'm so glad they did because like it made this series so much better and just I love it so much. Please read it. <laughs> And then I've got the Green Hollow Duology by Emily Tesh. This one I read recently, like last month or the month before, one of the two. Um, but this one is also a novella duology and it's following the myth of the Green Man. The Green Man is this like fairy guy who has been living in the forest for hundreds of years and he's their like protector. It follows our main character Tobias who is actually the Green Man and he's just been kind of by himself for the last 400 years while he's been watching these woods until one day a man named Henry comes along and he is a folklorist and he is obsessed with the legend of the Green Man and he finds out that Tobias just happens to know a whole lot of information about this green man myth. So they end up becoming friends as well as slowly falling in love and it's just the sweetest thing ever. The plot honestly wasn't that well developed but it's a fantastic character based story uh, and the world is really interesting as well. There is also a hint of portal fantasy in book two as well which I really enjoyed and just overall this was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed it and like the romance was so so sweet so I would definitely recommend this one as well. The last of my duologies is the Devouring Grey duology by Christine Lynn Herman. This one is a YA urban fantasy set in somewhere in America, I forget where, uh, but it follows these four founding families who all have some kind of magic and their job is to keep this beast called the Grey from destroying everything basically. The Grey is this like misty monstrous thing that if you get sucked into the Grey you probably won't come out. So the magic is passed down from each generation and this book follows the newest generation of family magic wielders. I don't know how to word that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> this one is great for like Halloween season because it's very much a horror novel, but if you're anything like me then Halloween horror books are for every time of the year, so it does not matter that it's Christmas. I'm gonna read my spooky books, thank you very much. <laughs> but yeah, this series is a lot of fun as well. It's very queer, which I love, like not just the main characters but also like their parents too. They have like openly bisexual uh, main characters as well as their parents, which I love to see. That's, that's one of my favorite things that, that I've been seeing in books in the last few years years is is just seeing queer adults. It just makes me so happy to see. There's also a character who is an amputee and she is a fucking badass. I love her. But yeah, there's just a lot of like really good diversity in here and I love this duology for that and they're very quick reads. These are full length novels but they read so fast and you just like can't put them down once you start. I think I read both books in one sitting each because I just could not put them down once I got started on them. I also wanted to talk about the Cruel Prince trilogy by Holly Black. This is the like cotton candy read that that I was talking about. These are so much fun. They're so addictive. This one follows a girl named Jude who is a human but her half-sister is half fairy and one day her sister's fairy father comes to claim her, ends up killing the mom plus the stepdad and then he's like well I just orphaned these children so I guess I'll take them too. So he ends up taking his daughter plus Jude and her twin sister and off they go to fairyland where they're raised from there. And so Jude and her twin sister Taryn are the only humans in this fairy world and they are treated horribly and Jude goes up to be this absolute asshole for good reason but still she's a she's a douchebag half the time and that's why I love it because she's such an unlikable main character. She's not a good person. She's morally gray. I won't go into spoilers but like where her character goes she's not a good person at all and I love it. That's why I love this series so much. Jude isn't meant to be likable and I thought it was just so much fun and I could not put these ones down. Book two is definitely my favorite. The stakes are high. There's so much happening. There's all this like fairy court politics going on. Loved all of that. It was amazing. Amazing. And the cliffhanger at the end of book two was ridiculous. 
ridiculously good. So if you have somehow not read this series yet, but you want a really quick one, go for this one. It was so, so good and so addictive. I loved it. My other cotton candy series that I wanted to mention was the Brown Sisters Trilogy by Talia Hibbert. These ones are contemporary romances and they are just such a good time. Each book follows a different sister. These don't have to be read in order, they're all standalones, but they are just wildly addictive and they're hilarious too. They just have this like dry, sarcastic humor, which is my favorite thing in, in the entire world. So they're just really funny. They read super fast as well. They are very steamy and the smut is good. <laughs> Um, and just overall, they're they're a really good time. Uh, I think the first book is my favorite just because the main character deals with chronic pain and so do I. And so that was just a really nice thing to read and to be able to see myself in a, in a romance book. Uh, I had never seen that before. So that was just such a nice thing for me. But honestly, all three books are just incredible. They're all equally fantastic and I recommend the series so, so highly. And then my last two recommendations for this video are both middle grades. The first one being the Cassidy Blake series by Victoria Schwab. It follows a girl named Cassidy Blake who had a near-death experience but she was saved by a ghost and now she and this ghost are linked. They're best friends and Cassidy can also see other ghosts as well as be able to enter the veil which is like the ghost version of our world. And then on top of that Cassidy's parents are both like essentially ghost hunters kind of. They're starring in a TV show where they go all over the world to the world's most haunted cities and Cassidy goes along with them and the parents have no idea that she can actually see ghosts. So while they're doing their show she's getting into all kinds of trouble with ghosts. But yeah this series is just such a good time. I really enjoy them. I think the third book so far has been my favorite. I'm not sure if it's going to be more books later on, but right now it's a trilogy and I just, I love them so much. Cassidy is such a fun character. I love her relationship with her ghost best friend. Um, they're just so cute together. And yeah, this one's fantastic. And then the last series to recommend is The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. I have a bind up. So yes, this is a chunker of a book, but this is all seven books in one. And I think each book is only around like 150 pages max. Like they're super short and because they're middle grade, they read so so fast um, like you could like you could easily get through this in probably an evening most likely maybe two evenings but either way it's such a fast read I'm not really sure how to go into a synopsis for this one partially because everybody knows what this is basically real quick it's about these kids I think it takes place during like the beginnings of World War II and these siblings are sent off to go live somewhere where it's a little bit safer and one day they go into a wardrobe while playing hide-and-seek and they find a portal to a different world and then our story goes from there this is just such a fun series I'm sure most people have probably read it but I am trying to catch up on like all the children's series that I missed growing up and this is one of them so I'm about halfway through the series now and I really enjoy it. It is a really good time. I love all the creatures in here and just like the world in general. Um, the plot is really fun and just overall a great time so I would definitely recommend this one for a quick series to get through. So those are my top 10 series to recommend to help you get to your yearly reading goal. Let me know if you have any other recommendations down below but that'll do it for today's video so thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world and I will catch you in the next video. Bye!